let's talk about this. 3D printing is an incredible technology and it's become so accessible now that literally anyone can take advantage of it. You can pick up one of these bad boys for under 200 bucks and use it to create real world physical objects using digital blueprints of almost anything on demand in the comfort of your own home. And the most popular plastic to use by far is PLA. PLA, or polylactic acid, is a bioplastic, which means it's produced using renewable resources such as corn or sugarcane, unlike petroleum-derived plastics, which rely on finite resources for their production. In a world becoming ever fixated on renewables in every sector, PLA has rapidly skyrocketed in production and demand in recent years. And the thing is, it's easy to 3D print with, as well. Before PLA filament was widely available, the plastic most often used on these machines was ABS, a petroleum-based thermoplastic, and not only is its production and disposal not great for the environment, but it's a pretty crappy plastic to 3D print with too. It shrinks, it warps, delaminates, unless you have a high temperature printing environment. On the other hand, PLA is easy to print, it's very dimensionally accurate, and it doesn't even need a heated print bed. And for years, I was pretty convinced that PLA prints were the way forward for 3D printing and weren't damaging to the environment and would biodegrade quickly once disposed of. Unfortunately, that's just not true. And in the spirit of Team C's, I wanted to address some of my concerns and propose a solution to the growing plastic problem that is 3D printing. I'm not a materials scientist, but I'll do my best and I encourage your comments down below. You see, all plastics can degrade, but only some plastics can biodegrade, and very few plastics are compostable. Plastics that degrade are just flat out terrible for the environment. You might have heard of the term microplastics being thrown around a lot these days. They're created when plastics break into smaller and smaller pieces through mechanical processes or turn to dust through exposure to UV radiation, and these particles find their way into our waterways and eventually into the ocean. What you're left with is this soup of microscopic plastic fragments. The ocean is now full of microplastics and they bioaccumulate in the creatures up the food chain, and that includes us. We now eat plastic. Delicious. Biodegrading is better. Biodegradable plastics can be broken down into their core building blocks, water, carbon dioxide, and biomass. They can be reused by other organisms, but only under the right conditions. PLA can biodegrade, absolutely. But to do so requires months of exposure to temperatures over 50 degrees Celsius in a specific environment only seen in industrial composting facilities. You can't break it down in your garden compost bin. It's not gonna happen. In fact, the conditions are so specific and the enzyme required so rare in nature that I've now started to see PLA referred to as simply just a degradable plastic because outside of these conditions, it simply won't break down. And this only applies to virgin PLA. All the PLA filaments now on the market for 3D printing have modifiers added to them to improve their toughness or temperature resistance or flexibility or even just for their appearances. And these modifiers could be anything. They could be polymers or additives and it's highly unlikely that they will also biodegrade under the same conditions that PLA requires. And look, for some prints, you want them to last as long as possible. That's fine, but what about all those benchy boats, test models, and decorative prints that we make? Do you really need them to last potentially hundreds of years? I print so many things for reviews and for my iterative design process, and I just really hate knowing that they'll probably end up in landfill, or even worse, washed out to sea. Hobby Hoarder did a really interesting experiment a few years ago where he printed PLA benches, not unlike this one, and left them exposed to the elements, buried and submerged in water for two years to study the differences in degradation. And there was none. When I saw that video, it was honestly pretty eye-opening. So, what solutions are there? Just stop printing stuff? Sorry, it's not really gonna happen. 
I personally believe there are only two realistic ways forward if FDM slash FFF 3D printing is to become more environmentally conscious. Number one, recycling. You can recycle plastic at home fairly easily. For example, just collect your failed or unwanted 3D prints and support material and then melt them down into something else useful. For my testing, I collected and then melted down a range of PLA test prints in a cheap electric oven to create this plastic sheet. And you can now reuse this material to create and make new things. Brothers Make have produced a number of videos on how they convert plastic waste into a huge range of products, which gives the material a second lease on life. And I do think it's really cool. You should definitely go check out their work. However, my biggest issue with this approach is that it's essentially a hobby in itself. If you're interested in 3D printing, it's pretty time consuming as it is. It's not really all that realistic in my opinion, and even so, you'll eventually end up with too much plastic waste to use or too many recycled trinkets. It's not properly cradle to cradle design, but more like landfill with extra steps. Instead, for the recycling angle to actually make a difference, I reckon that government and industry leaders need to get together and actually invest in infrastructure to properly process PLA and make that process accessible to the public. Whether it's through construction of industrial composting plants or by taking in PLA plastic waste and turning it back into pellets for industry use, that would be a pretty good step in the right direction. Some companies in other countries already create 3D printing filament using recycled materials. I've tested many on the channel before, so it can be done. However, I have absolutely zero faith in the Australian government doing anything useful. We literally used to send boats of our recyclables to China until they just didn't want it anymore. And I'm pretty sure all of it just goes straight into landfill now. Rant, 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 Australia sucks. No, instead I reckon we need to create a new standard for everyday 3D printing with a filament that properly breaks down when exposed to the elements, especially if it finds its way into our waterways. When I'm done with my test prints, I want to be able to throw them into my compost heap to be broken down naturally and safely. And the thing is that plastic already exists and has done for over 150 years. And it's made using the most abundantly naturally occurring polymer in the world, cellulose. Cellulose acetate was first discovered in 1865 and up until fairly recently was incredibly common for use in packaging, apparel, film, as well as sunglasses, the frames on sunnies. In fact, it's probably the only plastic to have actually saved turtles, replacing the use of real tortoise shell from poached hawksbill turtles and probably saving them from extinction. The practice was finally banned worldwide in 1973. And the thing about cellulose acetate is that unlike many other plastics today, it can biodegrade in soil and seawater turning back into cellulose and acetic acid within at most a couple of years and much, much faster in composting environments. I'll link to some articles in the description below if you wanna read up more. There's heaps of wordy stuff to get through, but it's really, really interesting. As it turns out though, it's actually really difficult to get the damn stuff these days, at least in Australia. In the past, cellophane was indeed made from cellulose and you can test it because it, um, it readily dissolves in acetone. This stuff though, it says cellophane, but it's a fraud. I put some in acetone and nothing happened. The acetone did strip the red off this sheet, leaving it just clear. But my best guess is that these are both polypropylene, which decomposes far more slowly. Pretty annoyed by that actually. In fact, this white powder was the only form of cellulose acetate I could get my hands on quickly. Acetate sheets probably could have worked too, but nothing was around locally. And I do wonder if they're even real anymore as well. Um, but this stuff is meant to be used as an exfoliant additives for soaps, as an alternative to plastic beads, which are already really terrible. Um, but it's plenty good enough for my experiments. First, I wanted to see if I could dissolve it into acetone and make plastic with it. And it does readily dissolve. You end up with a thick goop, which I spread out on a number of surfaces to dry. I found some interesting papers discussing using extruded acetone cellulose acetate mixture. Uh, and I actually reckon it's pretty viable. The thin films left behind are actually incredibly clear um, and pretty strong too, which is really neat. But if I'm gonna make it into a filament to extrude, it needs to melt. Initially, I tried to cook some with a hot air gun using a tiny DIY frying pan. Um, it wasn't very effective. So I put some of the powder into my oven. 
Um, and according to the internet, cellulose acetate has a melting point of 230 to 300 degrees C, which is quite a bit higher than PLA. But as I slowly approached 230 degrees C, which is the max of my oven, it started to look and smell burnt and almost caramelized. And it was super sticky. So I pulled it out to cool. What's wild is after it cooled and I tried to pry it free, it squeaked in that distinctive cellophane sound. I haven't heard that since I was a kid, so that caught me off guard. Sadly, that's like the only cool thing to result from this experiment. The brown chunks are incredibly brittle. Um, it didn't even melt too, too much. It's not even remotely viable to what I would consider being able to be extruded into filament. But I know it's possible because of this Maker Coin. This is 3D printed with a cellulose-based 3D printing filament. It also smells like chocolate. No, really. In 2017, I did a video on a Kickstarter for scented 3D printing filament, Dan's Smelly Plastic. Sadly, it didn't get off the ground, but I think the most important aspect of the campaign was completely overlooked. It wasn't just another PLA with additives, but instead made using recycled cellulose. Also, I think I deserve a like for managing to find a single maker coin that I printed almost four years ago. It definitely is showing some age, it still smells, quite strongly of that chemically chocolate smell, um, but it is starting to sort of split across the layer lines. But at the time, it printed really, really well. Same as PLA, totally, totally fine. And I broke a little bit off and put it into some acetone to see if it did dissolve, and indeed it does. Whereas PLA usually will swell and maybe get sticky, but it doesn't usually completely dissolve. Beyond this, I also found an Italian blog post talking about 3D printing with cellulose acetate filament with very little information. But beyond those and a handful of difficult to decipher scientific journals, there isn't really much out there and I want to change that. Now there is a catch, or rather a few catches. Cellulose acetate is chemically intensive to make and to make the resulting plastic usable, you need to add a plasticizer, which improves strength and flexibility as well as improving the melting characteristics. And well, not all of them are very good for the environment. I am no material scientist again, but hopeful a balance exists between the material properties and environmental impact. Also, it's a plastic made from trees, so that's not fantastic because I like trees, but recycled sources are totally viable. And honestly, it sits better with me than PLA, which is essentially made from food. People could like eat that corn instead of it being used to make plastic and ethanol. Sustainability is challenging and I'm going to keep working at this problem, but in the meantime, we can work together to fix a very real immediate problem. I've partnered up with Mr. Beast and Mark Rober, along with hundreds of other creators on hashtag Team Seas to make a dent on plastic waste and you can help. Ocean Conservancy and the Ocean Cleanup have promised that for every $1 raised, one pound of trash will be removed from the oceans, rivers, and beaches all around the world. Together, we're trying to raise an insane $30 million, which is over 13,000 metric tons of trash. Bonkers. But I reckon the internet as a collective can do it. So head over to teamseas.org, link below if you're able to donate, and I'll keep you guys updated with the progress of the campaign, as well as my research into a viable alternative to PLA moving forwards. Because remember kids, benchies don't belong on the beach. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.